from 27 News. Live from the capital of Kansas, this is 27 News at 6. This morning's lightning leaves its mark on One Junction City Church, and this is all that's left. Nobody won last night's Powerball jackpot, which means the jackpot will now climb even higher. And I'm Shereen Jones. Coming up in a live report, I'll tell you what popcorn and country music have to do with each other. Good evening. I'm Amy Lee. And I'm Nate Hill. Thanks for joining us. Fire destroyed a Junction City Church today. Lightning hit the Zion United Church of Christ about 2.30 this morning. It hit so hard, the church's pastor says he found pieces of the chimney 50 feet away from the building. It's not something that we go through every day. So uh, uh, we'll just trust the Spirit will lead us to what we need and trust that he'll provide the folks to help us with it. For now, the church will hold services at a funeral home chapel. Damages are estimated at about $150,000. Church members will soon decide if and where to rebuild. If you'd like to help out the church, call Pastor Ken Barnhart at 238-4032. Most area homes have their power turned back on tonight. Strong storms knocked out power last night to about 14,000 area KPL customers. One KPL official says less than 100 homes are still without power right now. And it really is amazing that there weren't more fires like the one in Junction City because that lightning was pretty brutal at yes, times last night. It was powerful and definitely lit up the sky. Let's check in with Steve Balon in the First Warning Weather Center for the latest. And boy, did it rain last night. We had some really heavy amounts across east central Kansas. More is on the way for tonight and into tomorrow as well. Roaming thunderstorms and with all the cloud cover, we're only expecting to see a high of 81 for your Friday. Look at these rain totals from our storm spotters. Officially at Topeka's Billard Airport, 3.64 inches. Mayetta came in with three and they were localized four inch amounts in around Shawnee County and up towards Jackson County as well. High of 86 in Topeka, middle 90s up towards Barnes, Blue Rapids and Marysville and down to the south side temperatures were in the 80s and 90s with a 91 in Emporia, 94 in Osage City and just short of four inches from Pat in Osage City. Boy did her rain gauge in her lawn get quite a tall glass of water. Now our future cast hit this right on the money last night and it's got more heavy amounts and I'll show you those to you coming up in a few minutes. All right, thanks Steve. Two Kansans are $100,000 richer tonight. Not us. They won money in last night's huge Powerball drawing, but no one in the nation hit all six numbers for the jackpot. That means the money jumps to about $280 million this weekend. So all the Powerball hype isn't over just yet. The highest the Powerball jackpot has ever reached is $295 million. Bad news for drivers. It looks like gas prices have crept back up again. Here in Topeka, prices are averaging $1.55 a gallon, and experts say they'll continue to rise as Labor Day weekend approaches. Gasoline, uh, fuel business is very, price is very volatile, as you well know, and, uh, and any time there is a disruption in uh, supply, then that causes a problem, and uh, as it has this time. One Chicago refinery has been temporarily shut down, Swift says he believes that's one reason the prices have gone up. A Salina, Salina woman faces charges of fraud. Prosecutors say Don Glassburn Hosley cheated a man she met on the Internet out of almost $230,000. She allegedly convinced him to invest in businesses, then refused to give his money back. Geologists want to find out why part of a highway in Reno County is sinking. They're studying US-50 this week, where it appears to be dropping at a rate of one inch per month. A Lawrence man will build a statue of Dwight D. Eisenhower for the U.S. Capitol. After a nationwide search, a board picked Jim Brothers to make the statue. He most recently sculpted the ten figures that portray soldiers in battle for the D-Day Memorial in Bedford, Virginia. The Eisenhower project still needs to be approved by Congress. Go to any grocery store and you'll find the necessities, food, medicine, and toilet paper. But what about country music? 27 Shereen Jones is live at Albertsons tonight. Shereen, what is the deal with country music? Amy, a week or two ago, boxes of pop secret popcorn like this one began showing up on store shelves, not only stuffed with popcorn, but also with these CD-ROMs featuring Topeka's very own Dixie Road. In 1995, I, I called some friends and I said, let's get together and, uh, and play some songs. Six years and a few band changes later, Dixie Road is ready to go. Lots of 
harmony vocals and high energy, uh, kind of more of a contemporary sound. We all get along well. We don't, you know, we get on each other's nerves sometimes, but we know how to take each other. We don't have to punch each other out. Things get boring. Uh, I kind of look at Jim because I always look, <laughs> always look for Jim to, to uh, do something funny. A connection with Speedway International lands the band its first big break. We were fortunate enough to get on 1.7 million CD-ROMs that are in every Winston Cup program race in the country. Well, that kind of blossomed. Now, six million more CD-ROMs sit on store shelves across the country. Having uh, this many uh, CDs out with our song on it, uh, obviously, it's a goal of any band because you want to be heard. Dixie Road isn't alone. It shares the spotlight with Ricochet, a band that's taken the Topeka group under its wings. We aspire to be like those guys on and off the stage. They're fantastic musicians, but they're terrific guys. Now, these guys are going to be here at Albertsons until 8 o'clock signing autographs, and I'm sure singing a prompt song or two. And Amy, just think about it. A year from now, we can say we knew these guys back when. Just let them keep going. Don't stop them. That was good. <laughs> good music and popcorn. Very that. impressive. Yeah. Yeah, I like that little bop bop. Well, flying on airplanes alone can be nerve-wracking. Especially if you're a kid. Up next, what you can do to make the trip easier. And Miss Kansas will be flying high soon, all for a good cause. Details are straight ahead. This is 27 News at 6. Coverage you can count on. Judged best newscast by the Kansas Association of Broadcasters for three consecutive years. With Amy Leitz, Nate Hill, meteorologist Bruce Jones, and Jared Smalley with sports. You're watching 27 News at 6 on KSNT. Now, it's Connecting with Kids, brought to you by the Noller Dealerships of Topeka. Twice in recent weeks, airlines have misplaced a child who flew alone. And this has many parents on edge. Connecting with Kids takes a look at what to do, what you can do to put yourself and your child at ease when flying solo. Ten-year-old Taylor Ennis has spent the entire summer away from mom. This is the first time that she's actually traveled alone, unaccompanied. At first I was scared, but then when I got on it, it was kind of fun. Mom was scared as well when Taylor boarded the plane two months ago. Was she going to be okay? Are they really going to keep an eye on her? In fact, the airlines almost never misplace a child. Still, lots of other things can go wrong. Delays do happen, diversions happen, cancellations happen. So this is part of, of, of flying today. An estimated 7 million kids, some as young as 5, fly unaccompanied every year. Experts say parents should reassure and empower their children. Provide the child uh, with emergency telephone numbers to travel with and also the itinerary, the travel itinerary for the child to have on their person. Also consider book a flight during the day, book a non-stop flight, and in an aisle seat close to the flight crew. But above all, ask yourself, is your child mature enough to handle the trip? So I'm a lot more comfortable with her flying at this age, and I think I know I may have been very hesitant if she was six or she was seven. Taylor was. She's just not so sure she wants to do it again anytime soon. I might not want to leave my mother for this long again. There's nothing like it to be reunited again. It's wonderful. I'm Stacy DeWitt, connecting with kids. And for more advice, go to KSNT.com and click the Connecting with Kids icon. Miss Kansas is setting her sights high to help one local foundation. Kimberly Grice came to Topeka to announce her plans to jump from an airplane. She'll get donations towards her jump and give the money to the Transplant Assistance Fund. Even though she's afraid of heights, she's focused on helping the organization. I'm getting ready to go to Miss America and support organ and tissue donation. And uh, I have a personal uh, relationship with that. My brother was a donor and passed away probably about eight months ago. And so it's a very personal issue for me, it's a passion of mine. If you'd like to donate toward Kimberly's jump, contact the Topeka Community Foundation, and she tells us that she will not be jumping until after the Miss America pageant. <laughs> That's probably a good probably idea. Probably a good idea. Wow. Yeah. <laughs>
The Kansas City Chiefs get ready for a tough matchup tonight. Jared has details, and the Hayden Wildcats prepare for the upcoming season. Our first high school football preview is coming up in sports. But first, our KSNT Allergy Report is brought to you by Jayhawk Pharmacy Custom Prescription Center, your natural hormone replacement therapy specialist. Alternary and ragweed on the high side of the mold spores are moderate, and our soggy future cast forecast is coming up right after this break. Well, just like last night, we're expecting to see more heavy rains for northeast Kansas for tonight. I guess you could say the weather will be for the ducks the next few days. And I guess it's appropriate that this Saturday is the Great Topeka Duck Race. See how Mother Nature plans all that out just perfectly? This Saturday at Lake Shawnee, race time is at 2.30. And all the money raised is, is uh, providing uh, money for the Big Brothers and Big Sisters and Sertoma sponsorships. All you got to do is pick up the phone, call 23 Ducks. You can make a big difference in a child's life. At the Capitol Federal Saving Sky Cam, partly cloudy skies and a bird's eye view from our KSNT Tower. 85 degrees, the current temperature. We had a lot of thick cloud cover early this morning, but then the sun started to peak out during the afternoon. And now it's starting to develop some thunderstorms as we go towards this evening. Out at Topeka's Billard Airport, 85 degrees, the current temperature. Humidity is sky high, dew point at 73. Winds are now to the northeast at 9 miles an hour. We've got 80s and a few 90s across northeast Kansas, 86 in Lawrence and Emporia, up to 92 in Salina. And just to the west of Salina, the thunderstorms are really getting to going with the heating of the day and the humidity. Thunderstorms are firing in north central Kansas on our digital Doppler radar. You can see the line of strong thunderstorms rolling on through, heading towards Concordia and Salina. Just a little thunder shower activity towards Burlingame and Eskridge, but the big activity is out to the west where the Storms Prediction Center has issued a severe thunderstorm watch box till 10 o'clock. So anywhere basically the west of Manhattan, you may have some rough weather as we go to the evening hours. Otherwise, later on for tonight, beyond 10 o'clock, Everybody in northeast Kansas could see lots of heavy rains just like last night. Here's the setup. We've got a front stalled out across eastern Kansas and a tremendous moisture supply coming up on these southerly winds just to the south of this front. It's hitting the front, and as low pressure swings out of the Rockies, where those storms are now, we will see lots of heavy rains and even another batch of rain coming in for Friday night. Otherwise, we've got to wait till Saturday afternoon before this cool front zips through northeast Kansas, clearing out the skies and giving us some very comfortable weather as we go towards the second half of this weekend. But in the meanwhile, umbrellas up in your future cast. Only here on 27 News. A lot of the showers and thunderstorms beyond 10 o'clock will probably be south of I-70 along that front. And here we are right around 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. You can see the wet weather diminishing a little bit. Kind of like this morning, the showers and thunderstorms went away for a good majority of the day, but refire in the afternoon. And around 5 o'clock for the drive time home for tomorrow as we head to the weekend, we will see showers and thunderstorms redevelop and go into Friday night into early Saturday morning as well. But as we go towards Saturday around 7 o'clock, a lot of the rain moves off towards Missouri, and we begin to clear the skies out as that front pushes through by midday Saturday. So how much rain are we going to get? A lot, especially down to the south. Here's our future cast, which was right on top of the storm last night, pinpointing two to three inches of rain along the I-35 corridor and down to the southeast, one to two inches from Topeka down towards Emporia, and probably closer to a half an inch of rain up to the north of I-70. Scattered storms for tonight. Heavy rains are possible, especially around and after midnight, with a low of 69 degrees, 81 tomorrow's high. Late thunder is possible, otherwise mostly cloudy skies. And for tomorrow night, 69. Another soaker is on top with some fog patches scattered around northeast Kansas. Five-day forecast shows we're going to be clearing out quite nicely as we go towards Saturday afternoon in towards Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And highs will be in the mid-80s. But we'll keep a sharp eye on these storms as they roll on in as we go towards tonight. A good soaking and then a lot of sun. That's right. All right. Thanks a lot, Steve. Sure. All right. Chiefs game tonight. Sure. Big one. They've been waiting a while for this one because it's the first one not at home, on and that's always a little bit tougher. Straight ahead, the Chiefs are minutes away from their most challenging preseason game to date, and tonight we start our Topeka High School football previews. Let's take a look at the Hayden Wildcats coming up next in sports. The weather brought to you by Alliance Bank. It's the 2001.